You know when you get errors when you're coding and you just want to give up? Well, let me show you a simple method that will solve any error or bug you ever face when developing. The method I'm about to show you right now, I shouldn't be showing to anyone because it is so powerful and it has gotten to the point now where you can quite literally build anything once you learn how to solve any bug. That's why on top of knowing what to say next when using AI models, the next most important thing that you need to understand how to do when vibe coding or just coding with AI is how to solve errors effectively. Let me show you how. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, I'm going to show you the troubleshooting process that you have not seen yet, and it's super cool. And I discovered this through iterations of years of developing, and I decided, you know what? Why don't I just have the AI model do it for me? Let me first show you a bug. I'm going to come to my platform and upload an image. If you're wondering what the platform is, this is thumbio.com. Check it out. It's probably live by the time you see this video. Absolutely amazing. Most best ever thumbnails on the internet. The bug I'm going to show you today is, you know, they come over to template library and they're like, I want to put myself in Fortnite. I double click this. Oh no, it's doing a double generation, Fortnite, Fortnite. And then you'll notice with the output here, there'll be two Fortnites. Two Fortnites, Fortniteception. So it looks like it didn't want to give me the second Fortnite, but you'll see the original bug here of having Fortnite twice. So this is a little hit or miss. I forced the bug for obvious reasons. I want to show you how to solve a bug. But the idea is that use your platform. If you're like, Corbin, my platform is absolutely amazing. You want me to break it in like 10 seconds? Go to your platform right now. Open it. Put it in your emulator. Let's say localhost 3000. Do whatever task you want it to do. So is your an AI email software? Is yours some type of AI responder? Whatever the task is, hit enter. Reload your page right away. I bet it'll break because you haven't set up the logic to handle when a user unmounts components on a React front end. But beyond that, let me show you how to solve it. So in order to solve that, we're going to go to something that I taught earlier this week or maybe a couple weeks ago by the time you see this video. Editor. In editor, there is a thing in cursor called rules. This also applies to other platforms. They'll have a little rule thing. So if I go to settings here and I go to rules, memories, and commands, there was a specific rule we set, which was project rules. And to be honest with y'all, I'll leave in the description down below what these are, how to apply them, how to set them up. So you know how to set them up. But what I want to tell you is that I create a project rule for debugging, for solving errors. The rule we created in that video was for front-end development and best practices. This is amazing for the initial setup phase of an application. But once you get to the point where you have a ton of code, you don't necessarily need to worry about creating more code. Rather, we need to clean the code. So therefore, I made the rule debug. And here is debug. I love debug. I'm going to show debug live in action, and we're going to debug together. Also, if you don't even know what debug means, actually, let me give you some lore. Why are they called bugs, Corbin? Because when development and software development first started in the 1900s, I don't even know the exact date, but the computers were so old fashioned that they would have light bulbs in the back or some type of light where sometimes when you were trying to create software back then, the issue was quite literally not the code, but there was a dead bug in the computer. This isn't a joke. Look it up. That's why they call them bugs. So debug is removing that bug. Now back then you had to clean the light bulb, but now we got to talk to an AI model, which honestly sounds so dystopian, like how far we've come. 42, if you know the reference, you know. All right, so the idea though is, let me know in the comments if I forget to paste this, but I'll put this as a comment in the description down below because honestly, I don't want to make a Google Doc just for this one rule. I'll paste this entire thing or do the screenshot method. Screenshot, am I in the way? I'll paste this as a comment. If I don't leave this as a comment for the video because I do schedule these out, y'all, let me know and I'll just comment it. Let's see this in action. All right, first off, we'll make sure that it's always on so that's in your relevant chat. It knows to use this rule. Second off, we're going to go to agents. Third off, we're going to identify the bug. Screenshot. If yours is not a visual bug like mine, then just describe it. You'll be fine. Drag. We have the rules enabled. I'm going to simply go to ask mode. Let's talk a little bit. I'm going to use a high level model like Sonnet 4.5 as we're dealing with a real bug here. And we want to make sure that we're not dealing with something like auto, which can get really dumb really fast. The way we would typically approach this would be you would understand what your bug is. And we like to do a thing called repeating the error or just essentially duplicating it, replicating it, whatever it so that we can see that logic wise, how do we even arrive at this point? Now I know to replicate my air. Oh no, disappear. Don't go away. Oh no. <laughs> I know to replicate my air. I hit template and I hit a template or I add a template and then it happens. I know that's what's occurring here. So I'm gonna say this. I want you to set up logs to solve this bug I'm having with my app. When I click a template and two outputs come out for the messages and versions, what's happening? First ask mode. Let's make sure this model's on the same page of understanding what the air even is. Last thing you want it to do is the model's like, I think I know what the error is and then goes down a whole different rabbit hole and you find yourself coding for three hours and, and just being like, this is cooked. Get on the same page with the model. Sometimes these models get a little bit excited and just wants to start coding right away and just starts going crazy, whatever, whatever. What we want to do is next go to plan mode. Now, in this context, it was able to find it right away because I forced this bug, but I'm going to act like it doesn't know what it's doing. It's just confused and we're going to do this. 
So I'm going to say first, just give me the content logs to prove this is right. I'm going to enter here. Typically what will happen in your context, because literally my code literally says slash slash comment. Hey, we put this here on purpose. <laughs> Obviously we wish all bugs were like that. And maybe long-term AI will get so good that it'll be able to find bugs like that. But what I want to prove to you is how to leverage console logs here. So you will see real quickly how to do that. First, we want to get a plan. Make sure you're on the same page. We're on the same page here. Realize that I'm getting two different duplications and you know, outlining all this different stuff. I'm going to say, make the plan to add, enter. I found myself liking using 4.5 now when it comes to planning. Maybe that's just specific to my tech stack, but I'm just getting good results like that. Executing though, running on the track, I like using Composer 1. So we're gonna add this little debug system. What I want you to identify here is notice how it's going to be showing the underlying logs. It should be using template library here, but we'll see, build. One thing you'll notice with console logs is they can get very excessive where if I click this, let me actually make sure it goes all the way to the right, y'all. Should be to the right, uh, it's bottom, no fun. But if I click this, you'll see that, oh my gosh, there is so much going on, ah. Don't worry, we're gonna solve it, don't worry. What we'll do is that once it's done building, which it is here, here is the first step replicate the error or bug. I usually like calling them bugs because sometimes an error will just show up right away and you can kind of copy and paste into your chat. A bug is a little bit more annoying because your code is not throwing an error, but it's like a behavior. First thing you want to do, you want to refresh your underlying console log. So hard reload, nice and fresh. I'm going to actually delete this project. So let's actually start from scratch. I'm going to add my image. All right. Once you get to this point where you're like, I'm about to test and check out what is going on and give me those logs. Now you hard reload. I don't need the logs for when I uploaded the image because I know that works. I don't need the logs for this analysis because I know it works, etc. Now that we're here, we are going to simply, and what I like to do actually before we repeat the error is I'll open up the Chrome and you see this little thing called filter. What we're going to do is we're going to do template library here. Boom. Don't show me any log if it's not template library. Once I do that and close that, and it honestly looks like there's some type of loop incurring here. I'm on a broken branch, so who cares? <laughs> That's why the logs are freaking out. Template library, double click Fortnite, error incurs, come back to my log. There we go. And as you can see, it's absolutely freaking out because there is some type of loop incurring. <laughs> Who cares? What we can do here though, is what you'll notice is we get all these logs. They're specific to template library. This is the unlock. Now I don't care. Watch this. I remove this. Look what's about to happen. Huh? Too much, Corbin, too much. I know it's too much. Put template library back. Now we can hone in on specifically what can occur and cause this error. So I click these all open, you know, they're all nice, all beautiful. And uh, then you're gonna go ahead and copy these, right? Copy. And then all you need to do, because the rule we set up, it knows exactly what to do next. Now I hit enter here, it's going to see the logs and it's gonna be like, oh, I know what to do. I'll fix it and it'll execute. And then on this next go around, what you'll notice is that it will work perfectly fine. Look at these two outputs. Look at this, y'all. Oh my gosh. If you're looking at this video right now and you're like, Corp, I want to use this software. I don't blame you. It's Thumio.com. Is this not the coolest thing ever? Look at that. This was the original image. I don't mean to get sidetracked, y'all. This is too cool. Okay. I love it. Once it's done, it will say confirmation. It shouldn't be an issue anymore. And typically you'll also notice is that it will give you like what even happened. I would suggest you read that. So for later debugging, you can see what specific errors typically show up in your platform. And here is the workflow. Now, this method might not debug all of your errors right away, but don't worry because all you need to do is a simple chat and back and forth. So what I would do next in this logic is I would delete this. We got to start fresh again. I'm going to add my image. The reason why I'm adding my image and now hitting reload so that the console log is fresh is so that we can mitigate the least amount of noise when dealing with airflow and bug flow. Our goal here simply is to really narrow down what's incurring and what's causing the bug. So if I go to template library again, supposedly it's fixed, I'd hit apply. And then what I would do is open back our Chrome tool here. And then I would copy over these logs again and just do a back and forth until the underlying bug is fixed. And there we go. The bug is fixed and I look absolutely amazing with a pickaxe in my hand and wings on my back. That's the workflow. Simply back and forth, back and forth. Now you might run into a situation where your bug is stubborn. Here is your second major tip here. If the bug is extremely stubborn and you're doing this method and it's still not working, change the model. Maybe Composer 1, 4.5 Sonnet, GBT 5.1 High Codex. You know, they're just, they're, the names are too long. Change the model. You need a new perspective. Approach again. There has been situations. I've gone down rabbit holes of Composer 1 and I'm like, you know what? Switch it to Sonnet 4.5 and it worked instantly on the first shot. That's your second solution. Same method, different model. Your third solution will require a little bit more technical experience, but it's the same logic back and forth, but maybe take a couple seconds, kind of gut check the model. There's been situations where I've had a bug and I'm like, wait, hold on, hold on. I could solve this in 10 minutes. 
what are you doing right now? And then simply say, did you check X, Y, Z? And it's like, great suggestion. And then it fixed the bug. So sometimes it does require a little bit of input from you to be like, you're making this more complex than it really is. And then letting it execute. What I just showed you right there, that workflow was probably one of the most valuable workflows I've ever shown on this channel. And part of the reason why I'm even showing workflows like that, which is kind of counterintuitive to me because I am a very much a capitalist and competitive person is because of the fact that I think everyone should be able to code and do software. And that's why my goal is democratizing developing as I think anyone can code now. Some of y'all would be like, Corey, why the heck do you have the Joker behind you? Because the saying that I love from the Joker is it's not about the money. It's about sending a message. And that's why I'm here. And one thing about me is, if you can't tell already, is that I am a very driven person. Therefore, if you tell me I can't reach 100K subs, I'm going to reach 100K subs. Therefore, if you tell me I can't IPO my stock, I'm going to IPO stock. Therefore, if you tell me, hey, Corbin, not everyone can code anymore, or AI models aren't that good at coding anymore, I'm going to prove it. So part of proving it is showing you secret sauce like this. This sauce is so secret that now you're going to be able to solve any error. Is it going to take you time? Of course it is. It's going to take you hours. Of course it is. Like any good skill, it requires input. That just about does it in today's video. So make sure to leave a like. It is completely free. This is your first video ever seeing me. And you're like, I like this kind of video, but I want to see you build an app from scratch with just human language. Then you are in luck. There's a whole series dedicated to that. That is multi hours long. Check it out in the description down below. How to vibe code. So I'll see you in the next. Did Corbin just show me a workflow that's going to be able to solve any error in my app? And therefore I can build absolutely anything now type of video to Fortnite. Fortniteception.